I get asked pretty regularly how often I actually use my 3D printers and for what outside of the prop building that you generally see me doing on this channel. I think I mentioned at some point that you probably haven't seen like 90% of the things that I 3D print despite this being a main focal point of my channel. More days than not, I have at least one 3D printer running to make me whatever the day is called for. There are so many problems that this technology has helped me solve, whether that's making a custom bracket for something that I need or helping me fix something with building a replacement piece, and those are the kinds of prints that I wanted to focus on in today's video. I don't have any props on going at the moment, so you're basically going to be shadowing me as I work on whatever comes up this week. And hopefully this will give you an interesting and realistic look at all of the kinds of awesome and useful things that this technology can be used for. The majority of the prints that I make can be split into four categories. You've got the props, which is what you're used to seeing me build on this channel, the art supplies at product range that I manufacture and sell, the useful prints, which are things that in many cases I use daily, but you probably never see, and then the fun random prints. A lot of the time these end up being things for other people. Like these gingerbread ornaments I just made for my grandma. We're going to come back to these because I wanted to start with one print in particular because I think it's a pretty perfect example of why 3D printing is so incredible. This unassuming looking tube is something I carry around with me every single day. It was very specifically designed to carry around needle tips. Me being type 1 diabetic is never a topic that really comes up in a video, but it uh, is a thing. I designed this tube to perfectly fit five of the insulin pen tips I use and need to have on me if I leave the house. It's something that millions of other people could also use, but no one manufactures stuff like this. So without a 3D printer, I'd be forced to use a far less efficient case for these, which is why I wanted to start with this as an example. You have the potential to make hyper-specific objects to improve upon your everyday life with this technology. On top of all of the fun prints and projects that you can make, which let's jump back into. I briefly showed these gingerbread cookie looking ornaments earlier, but printing a couple of sets of these for my grandma inspired me to combine this very cool concept with another love of mine, droids. I truly don't know what made me think that this would be a sane and reasonable idea, but I went with it. I drew up 20 different droid designs in the iced gingerbread cookie style and turned them into an ornament set. Because these are flat designs, they were really easy to model. I imported my drawings as SVGs into Fusion 360, added a ring at the top for attaching some string or ribbon to, and extruded the sketch to have the cookie base and then the top icing design for each droid. I'll link the files for these below as well as anything else you see me print in this video if any of you are interested in printing your own. The other cool thing about these ornaments is you don't actually need a multicolor capable printer to print them in the two colors. If you do have some sort of AMS unit, then it can do the color change automatically, but if not, you can set up a pause in the print file and manually swap the brown filament to white for the exact same effect. I was so happy with how this first set of gingerbread droids turned out that I went and did another set of 20 because I realized I accidentally left out a bunch of good ones in the first group. I feel like there's also probably some sort of ironic joke to be made out of the type 1 diabetic girl 3D printing a bunch of cookies, but it's also pretty awesome that you can take a drawing or design that you have and bring it to life as a physical object within a day or two. This was apparently the week of Christmas prints for me because I also got requests from various family members for some of these little houses. Houses. These are some of my favorite kinds of 3D prints because the parts are broken down into separate colors. That means they're accessible for any 3D printer as well as not producing any additional waste from purge material. There were a couple of smaller parts that utilized multicolor printing if you had it. There were also separated versions if you didn't, but because the parts were pretty flat, it was fairly minimal for color changes and purge material. I ended up printing all of the window pieces in some clear resin. It was just going to be easier for me and also make the window parts more transparent in the end than you'd probably be able to achieve with transparent filament. Once I had all of the pieces printed, I started gluing everything together. It might not have been the brightest idea to print multiple of these at once because I had to figure out which parts went with what house design, but there were some pretty clear instructions with the files, so we managed in the end. Once everything was glued together, the last step was adding in some battery-powered tea lights to give these houses that cozy glow. And here is the little village I ended up with. These turned out so great, and it's always fun for me to play around with different colors of filament for a change. When you're mostly printing props and pieces that are getting painted later, filament color really doesn't matter, so using something that isn't black, white, or gray is a nice switch up. 
It only took me a couple of days across two printers to get all of the parts for these houses printed, but I probably could have gotten them all done in a single day if I'd started earlier. If you're looking for a fun Christmas print, then I highly recommend. I'm probably gonna end up having to make even more of these at some point in the very near future. While I was doing all of these fun Christmas prints, I was also keeping up with product production. I don't think it's ever really come up on this channel, but I was a full-time traditional, typically watercolor artist for years, used to make YouTube videos all about that, and when I got into 3D printing, I started to use it to help me solve various shortcomings that I found in the art supplies storage world. I'd showed the things I'd make myself in videos, and it accidentally spiraled into a whole business, so I'm constantly keeping up with orders and restocking the various products. Because because I'm using 3D printers so often in my work, and at this point own quite a lot of them, there always seems to be some 3D printer related tools and accessories that I need to print for myself. This was a bit of a chill out and catch up week for me, so anything that I'd been putting off print wise was getting done in this time. The first thing I had on my list was another set of these dry pods. You add desiccant and even a hydrometer to these containers, and they sit in the front of the standard Bamboo Lab AMS units to keep the enclosure drier for your filament. I've never really had an issue with keeping my filament dry, I just apparently happen to live in one of those lucky places where humidity isn't a big concern, but these are just so easy to add to the AMS units that I figured it wouldn't hurt. Especially because I tend to use my X1C and AMS units to house my most used filaments, so it's always ready when I need something printed. For instance, I tend to keep black and white ABS installed, so if I need a particular piece for one of my pegboards, I can easily just send a print to the machine because I know the right filament is already ready in one of the slots. The Scatus pegboards are probably what I'm most likely to print pieces for on a weekly basis. I've got a lot of them around my workshop and there are so many incredible prints for them that when I realize, oh, hey, I need another hook or a shelf for something, I just get one printing to add. Next thing I wanted to tackle was improving my filament storage. I use a couple of these IKEA carts, which are absolutely perfect for the job. I always have the ends of the filament poking out all over the place though, so I've had some of these filament clips on my to print list. There's lots of different types out there, but these ones are specifically to clip into the holes of the bamboo lab spools, which is what the majority of the cart is storing right now. They keep the filament end within the spool of self, and it's a really simple print, but it cleaned up this cart really nicely. Nicely. I obviously have quite a lot of 3D prints all over my workshop, both for decoration and display, as well as for functionality purposes. These backdrop hooks are something you'd never normally see in a video, despite me using the backdrop itself all of the time. I knew these were always going to be visible, so I custom designed them to have a bit of a Star Wars flair to fit in with the rest of the studio. They're printed in silver ABS because they're technically on the same wall as my armor tools, which are also mounted onto the wall with silver ABS prints. Another Another thing I've needed to add to this space is a tissue box of some sort. It didn't really feel right just grabbing whatever, especially when I have the option to make something custom. I originally thought about turning some Death Star panels into a cover of some sort, but then I came across this holocron design and I knew I had to print one. It's again one of those files that's separated by colored parts, so completely accessible for all 3D printers. I originally thought about using some transparent blue PETG for the base, but I decided to go with this Polymaker Starlight filament instead. It's like a duochrome finish, very cool filament that the camera is not doing justice. For the detail parts, I went with one of my recent favorites, this Bamboo Lab PLA in bronze. It's like this really nice metallic finish, and it's more of an aged gold color than bronze, but either way, always looks really cool when printed. And I thought the combination of the two filaments would look really nice together. Once everything was printed, I used some good old super glue to attach the bronze details to the main structure, and here's how it turned out. Some of the overhangs on the bronze parts weren't the greatest, but overall this is a really cool effect, and the only thing I had left to do was add some actual tissues into it. Now this was of course just one week of what I got up to with some of my 3D printers. Some weeks all I'm printing is droid parts like 24 hours a day. Other days I decide I want to make Death's Crown and convince myself that I need to print an entire display bus to go along with it. Something so hyper-specific that you know it's happened. It uh, makes for a very interesting workshop greeter. 
work. I love to make stuff. I love to paint stuff. So being able to create so many different types of projects with the various kinds of 3D printers is absolutely perfect for me. Even better that it can be done with such a quick turnaround because if I feel like working on something, then I want to be working on it as soon as possible. I hope this video was able to give you a good look into a variety of the different types of things that you're able to create with this technology. But anyways, have fun printing and I will see you in my next video.